Hello, Shant. Um, first of all, uh, let me say thank you for the opportunity to have this conversation. I'm Anjan Hai. Thank you for having me. I'm very honored to be here and great to see you as always. Great. Let's start with the simple question. Tell me about yourself a little bit. Okay. So, as with many Armenians, it may not be that simple. Uh, I myself was born and raised uh, abroad in Los Angeles. Uh, to parents that came from uh, the Middle East in Iraq and before that uh, the ancestry back to where your ancestry comes from in uh, Western Armenia uh, in the Cilicia region in my uh, example. So I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I have uh, pursued a career in medicine. Um, I am a surgeon by training and I also have a background in public health. Okay. Okay, interesting. So now we are sitting here in, in Armenia. So tell me what uh, bring you here? Again, not a simple question to answer. Uh, it is probably the aggregation of many, many factors that uh, have come into play in my life as uh, someone who spent his youth uh, seeing the independence of Armenia, seeing some of the hardships and uh, ultimately visiting and being able to be a part of Armenia. There has long been the existence of a, of a drive, of a desire to be even more a part of Armenia, whether it's uh, personally living here and being here with my family, as well as professionally, to be able to somehow contribute to the development of, uh, in my case, the uh, health sector or the improvement uh, of the health sector. Of course, there's always been uh, logistics at play and technicalities. One of the opportunities that I have been so fortunate to uh, be able to um, take advantage of was the fact that I have worked at UCLA and uh, the newly established uh, Promise Armenian Institute has a very strong mission to contribute to uh, the development of uh, Armenia, Armenian statehood. statehood. And it is be because of the support uh, of the Institute uh, and through UCLA that I am now able to uh, be here, reside here with my family uh, and be involved with various activities within healthcare. Okay. Um, and I know you moved to Armenia uh, last year. Yeah. Actually, it was less than one year after the war. And you came here with your family, with the uh, small kids. So, um, yeah, I assume it was probably a difficult decision for your family, yeah? I would say probably one of the easiest decisions to make. <laughs> um, I think that it has uh, long been in the plans, uh, having come to Armenia numerous times and uh, seen uh, both the um, advantages of, of being here in terms of quality of life and the values and the uh, traditions and practices that we would be able to experience as a family and particularly uh, for the kids in our family, uh, as well as the opportunity that I felt existed in terms of uh, being able to prof professionally contribute uh, and not only to contribute, but to receive the experience and to develop myself further through that new experience. Uh, it was uh, essentially a no-brainer. But okay, let me ask you a challenging question. We all know what does it mean to be a surgeon in the United States, yeah? Um, I'm sure, you, and you've been working for probably the most advanced hospitals in the world, yeah? So I don't honestly understand what exactly you can learn here because you mentioned that coming here, it's also an opportunity for you to learn something and grow uh, as, as a professional. So but let Help me out to understand what you, being a, a surgeon in the U.S., working for the best hospital, what you can learn here? I would say that uh, Armenia has a unique set of challenges, along with opportunities, of course. And being involved in the processes that allow for us to explore various solutions uh, to these challenges would be an educational development and a life learning experience for anyone, regardless of their credentials or their abilities or, or, or skills, whether they be clinical um, or otherwise in the professional world abroad. And uh, honestly, Arman, it's not so much 
unique to Armenia. Uh, I would say that uh, equally in terms of uh, challenging myself professionally or to contribute to my own development, uh, a move even to another country with a, another set of unique experiences or even a lateral move within the United States to a p position with a new set of challenges and a new set of demands will um, inevitably contribute uh, to, the, to my development, to anyone's development. It's essentially icing on the cake that it so happens to be that uh, we are doing this in Armenia. We are doing this uh, for a nation and a people uh, for which we have so much love for and for which we are so indebted to. There is uh, so much uh, of myself, of my family's identity that I attribute to me being Armenian and Armenianness that uh, having this stage of our life be in Armenia, having this challenge uh, be within Armenia or Armenia's healthcare system uh, is uh, is only again the uh, added benefits uh, of being here. Okay, very good. Let's then uh, talk a bit uh, about Armenia and specifically healthcare, your area of expertise. You mentioned uh, multiple challenges we are facing in Armenia, specifically in healthcare. Again, without going into all the details, high level, if you would say those are the three or four key. Uh, issues or challenges in uh, Armenian healthcare. What are the specific things you are you are having in your mind? Now here we get into questions that are a little bit more challenging to um, to answer because healthcare, as you can imagine, is an ex extremely complex uh, um, system, and it would be very hard to identify, say, one or two things that if we can fix, we would imagine a system that was completely different. However. There are indeed certain aspects and components to any healthcare system which are priority and are the fundamental pillars of any healthcare system. Financing and funding of the healthcare system is, of, co of course, a huge one. Uh, dealing with the uh, legacy, in our case, of the Soviet healthcare system, uh, where care tended to be highly fragmented. Uh, and there was a dependence on specialists. The creation and the, uh, ta the availability of our workforce is yet another complex challenge that uh, we need to find solutions to. And uh, ultimately, achieving uh, equitable, universal, comprehensive healthcare that shifts the focus of healthcare to truly making sure that patients and our population remains healthy, rather than focusing on treating illness or disease, is another area or a perspective that we need to keep in mind. I would finalize or summarize uh, by saying the other uh, perspective is that we uh, oftentimes have a disbalance in Armenia, not specific to Armenia, but uh, very much so in Armenia, between uh, utilization or access to healthcare and quality of healthcare. We, um, as a uh, whole, to include the diaspora, tend to focus our efforts on the provision of more healthcare and less discussions on and less uh, attempts to find solutions or um, improve the quality of healthcare that is delivered in the country. I know there is a there are more hospitals in Yerevan than in, for instance, Los Angeles. Yeah, indeed, per capita. Yeah. Um, per capita, absolutely. So, uh, how do you see uh, the situation in regions uh, in Marzis? Um, there is certain disbalance, and again, based on your experience, how what would be uh, the solution here? Yeah. Uh, you know, Arman, in uh, a lot of the global health literature, uh, we hear this concept of a double burden of disease. In many countries that are emerging uh, from poverty, we see both issues of undernutrition, for example, and now obesity as well. Uh, to draw a parallel to that in Armenia's healthcare system, we have this double burden of disease as well. We have in rural areas of, or double burden of, uh, 
this condition as well. We have um, the issues of um, insufficient uh, infrastructure, human resources, accessibility in rural areas of Armenia. And then we have the conditions that you have highlighted, which is a surplus of healthcare workers in Armenia, a surplus of hospitals, uh, which again, one may think is an advantage if we believe in the uh, saying, the more the better. But in fact, unfortunately, healthcare doesn't work that way. Uh, quality is very much dependent on uh, certain centralization of care and certain number or quantity of volume so that we can assure various levels of quality. The solutions can be uh, multiple. We can, of course, uh, think of strategies so as to um, recalibrate and find solutions to both of these uh, areas of maldistribution by reallocating some of our resources, by incentivizing doctors and nurses to work more in the rural regions. We can also uh, directly go towards uh, further contraction of uh, healthcare facilities and infrastructure in Armenia. But there is also an opportunity to be a little innovative here as well and to think about alternatives of what to do with the existing healthcare infrastructure um, in ways that aren't necessarily defined in traditional healthcare. Can we use the uh, surplus of this infrastructure or healthcare workforce to maybe have more focus on healthy living, on prevention of disease, uh, more so than other countries, uh, even more developed countries. Can we somehow turn this into an ad ad advantage for us rather than purely think about it as a disadvantage? So we will need to come up with the various strategies so as to address this concern that you've discussed. We all know that in Armenia, we have very kind of a special situation in healthcare. Yeah? And for instance, just one number, 85% of all the uh, expenses in healthcare actually are out of pocket. Now, you are coming here uh, with your experience, with your knowledge uh, in public health in countries like US. Yeah, so, and I'm sure you heard this type of comments. In Armenia, we have very special uh, or, or unique situation, which cannot just bring this experience and make it workable here. So if I would ask you, do you think there is a, a readiness to be open for the new approach in Armenia? Or you, you again, working with the government, with the clinical stakeholders, you see kind of uh, an issue here, kind of, it's, it's a mindset issue. It's a, uh, uh, not openness to, be, to new things uh, which can really help or, or change the situation. What is your view here? Uh, well, I can certainly give my view, but I would also like to um, uh, give objective data and objective evidence. And, and the data and the, the polls and the surveys have in fact shown that there is a lot of interest and enthusiasm in developing a system where uh, we approach having universal health coverage, for example, even amongst surveys that have been done amongst the population. And in terms of um, organizations, whether they be the government organizations or private or other uh, not-for-profit organizations, gearing up uh, or doing what is necessary on everyone's part so that we can achieve a state where the, uh, the citizen of Armenia does not have the risk of having the catastrophic health expenditure that they do today. Uh, it, the, the evidence is, is beyond my, uh, my opinion. It is all there. We have uh, seen that in the priority, for example, uh, of the government strategy is the ultimate achievement of universal health coverage. We have seen that there is buy-in amongst the hospitals and the not-for-profit profit sector so that we can attain this very, very ambitious goal, but a goal that is uh, very necessary. Uh, and I would say I would agree that uh, my personal experience, having been born and raised in the United States, um, should not necessarily be the one that we um, use as a basis for developing this roadmap to achieve what we all want, um, to make sure that every Armenian gets health care regardless of their 
where they are geographically or financially. In fact, there are many other countries in the world that can serve as a much better precedent for uh, the roadmap that we, Armenia, should uh, adopt. Uh, I would say in the two years that I spent in Canada, I learned much more about uh, how to achieve uh, that vision than I have in the decades that I have been involved in in the United States. So to sum up, uh, yeah, yes, both subjectively in terms of my opinion, as well as objectively in terms of uh, the actual work being done and the actual results of uh, data of surveys and polls, uh, we are in line uh, and there is interest and there is willingness and buy-in to um, uh, undergo and to embark on the sometimes painful reforms and the changes that we will need to undergo, but that we all recognize are necessary so that we can achieve the health, health system that all Armenians deserve. Okay, so uh, let's switch a topic a little bit, yes? Yeah? So diaspora and Armenia. Um, I know you have been involved um, and you spend uh, uh, a lot of time here in Armenia even before you moved here with your family. Yeah? So now if you um, think uh, uh, about the connection and relationships between Armenia and diaspora, do you think uh, the war in 2020 changed, it, uh, changed the equilibrium in some way or another? I heard a lot of kind of comments from different people, again, from diaspora, from Armenia, that in the past there was kind of a, let's call it, social contract when, when uh, diaspora um, was involved in one way or another, either by donating some money or coming here and spending some time here in Armenia. Everybody was happy, but something changed after the war. So, and sp for you specifically, you moved here with your family. In your opinion, uh, what was the, that trigger pro that probably changed this paradigm and actually changed this equilibrium? I think the answer is yes, some, something has changed. Um, I don't know if that change uh, is a large movement quite yet, but I think the seeds and the potential for there to be a large movement towards that change is, is absolutely there. And to me, at the risk of oversimplifying things, uh, that change is exemplified by people who are willing to double down on efforts to develop and to improve Armenia's statehood, whether that is in our field, uh, healthcare, to make sure that even if one day the diaspora or other investors or other uh, uh, partners are not around, that Armenia itself will be capable of having a good healthcare system, continuing on the path of reforms, uh, continuing on the path of improvements. And this is the same for all other sectors to include economy and defense and what's not. It, to me, it's uh, best exemplified by, um, uh, by uh, the transition or the understanding that we as the diaspora should transition from being primarily in the humanitarian partner mindset and evolving more towards being contributors to nation building, to institution building, and to strengthening the systems in Armenia, which will ultimately be the forever bearers of the responsibility of statehood for this country. And yes, after the war, um, particularly after being here and, and moving here, we do see this, I do see this uh, on a daily basis, where people who really believe that the ultimate investment is in developing systems that will be able to sustain themselves in perpetuity in Armenia is the best investment that we in the diaspora can make. This is not at all to say that there is never a role for humanitarian assistance or there is a one size fits all approach. But in general, this changing of the mindset to focusing on developing the internal capacity and the institutions of this country uh, is an important one, uh, uh, I, I believe, and one that I, I firmly believe that we should espouse more as diasporans. I think this is a great point, yeah, and uh, 
um, this difference between humanitarian approach uh, versus structured, systemic, institutional approach, I think is very important. Uh, do you think there is, a, again, readiness from both sides? Or let me put it a different way. What should be done from both sides, Armenian and diaspora, to make this uh, more kind of effective and more uh, um, organized? Yeah, I, I can give you a very simple example. If you ask, uh, uh, do we have clear understanding? What is, uh, what are the things diaspora is doing in Armenia. Do we have a list of all those initiatives, uh, uh, programs, projects? When I asked this question, actually, I wasn't able to find an answer. So, uh, and there are numerous examples uh, like this, yeah? But what do you think we can do, each of us can do, to strengthen the connection between Armenia and diaspora, to really uh, work together and make sure we can benefit uh, uh, and learn from each other. Yeah. I think there are certain preconceived uh, notions on both sides, uh, as you mentioned, that we need to break. And uh, for me, uh, it's important to keep things in perspective. And what I mean by that is if we as a diaspora uh, are always complaining or stating or seeing as a barrier uh, Armenia, or Armenia's representatives um, as entities that do not allow us to uh, contribute to our maximum. Let us always remember that there are countries that are far, that put up far more resistance and barriers that are far more corrupt, for example, that are far less resourced, for example, that have far worse or less, less developed institutions, but within which various entities, organizations, individuals have demonstrated remarkable successes. Some of the strides, again, coming back to our field of healthcare, of, for example, reducing maternal mortality rates in countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, that would be so much more difficult to work in than the conditions here in Armenia were achieved, whereas even with the resources of the diaspora, we have had much slower improvements in things such as maternal mortality rate and infant mortality rate. So the question on the diaspora side should be, uh, uh, should be even if the conditions are such that we think it is very hard to do quote unquote business in Armenia, how can we overcome these perceptions or these realities if they are realities because other people have done it in other places where it has been much more challenging. On the Armenia side, there are equally perceptions that need to be broken. Uh, the perception, the common perception or, the per, or, or what we often think is the perception that the diaspora is felt to be a uh, financial cash cow, for example, uh, or, or other, other perceptions of what we think or what, the, what Armenia thinks the resources of uh, the diaspora can bring into the uh, country should also be broken. Armenia should think about other ways of engaging the diaspora, of minimizing, for example, the, the financial engagement and uh, maximizing other forms of engagement. And we are seeing this. We are seeing this through programs on the younger level, such as Birthright Armenia and others, and on the more professional level, like uh, the Igor's program that uh, we have been beneficiaries of uh, within the Ministry of Health and that has uh, uh, brought to bear a lot of fruit in, in terms of its effectiveness. And so I think step one is to um, break these perceptions, to understand that Armenia is not unique, that any diaspora Armenia or diaspora any other country uh, relationship will have its real and perceived barriers, but we need to think of those not as reasons not to be involved, rather as part of the package of challenges we need to overcome on both sides, as you mentioned. Yeah, and I think uh, in today's uh, truly connected uh, world, there is no need to be physically, always be physically uh, present to do something. Yeah, it can be commitment still to uh, be involved, uh, to dedicate some of your time, 
but I think to find this formula which will be which would allow uh, people to really get involved and get engaged with Armenia, I think this is also kind of a personal um, question or challenge uh, and we all need to think how uh, in the most effective way we can do that. And perhaps an important enabler of that is increased dialogue, open, frank, transparent dialogue between Armenia and diaspora and representatives of Armenia and diaspora because uh, Indeed, a lot of this may simply be perceptions, may simply be a lack of true understanding of what the abilities and the concerns of each side are. So to, um, uh, for organizations or people who are able to facilitate such dialogue, I think there is a tremendous role for that that will open up a huge potential set of opportunities that are right now remain locked in a, in a cabinet, unfortunately. Okay, so um, there is a famous statement um, saying to um, create the future, you have to invent it. Yeah, so let me finish by this conversation, uh, this conversation by asking you a question. Uh, what is the future you would like to see for Armenia? And probably you have also you can start with healthcare, but in general for Armenia. So, um, and what we need to do, let's say, now and tomorrow, to come to this, uh, to realize this vision in whatever ten years. And I understand this. It's a question you probably can spend another half an hour or one hour. But if you can summarize it, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, I would say my my vision for. Armenia and Armenians is, um, is a place where every Armenian can replicate uh, our experience, my experience, our experience as a family. Uh, a place that is perfectly suitable to give, to contribute, and to receive. Uh, for us, we have received more than what I think uh, I can ever contribute, but we are at a steady state and we are at a point where we have a very comfortable relationship with uh, being an Armenian and currently living in Armenia. And that give and take relationship doesn't necessarily, doesn't at all have to be at the quote unquote expense or investment of living in Armenia. One can very much uh, achieve that state without physically being here in Armenia uh, much of the time or, 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 being, or moving here. But it's that relationship where we feel like we are contributing to, we are part of Team Armenia. We are contributing to the team that A, we believe in and we want it to be victorious, the winning team, but we are also enjoying being part of the team. We are also receiving a lot of gratification, a lot of personal development from contributing to that team that will soon be the winning team and is on the path to being that winning team. And uh, using that somewhat abstract model to bring it down to healthcare is very much uh, the same. And it comes back to the original question that uh, I have. Uh, that you asked and that I answered, which was if my little experiences in healthcare and my uh, ability to contribute in my little way is in healthcare, uh, if I can do that and be personally uh, uh, satisfied and, and gratified and have some contribution, and if we can scale that up so that every Armenian can do that, then it's uh, uh, undoubtedly the case that the team will be the winning team because we do in fact have incredible resources both here and abroad. Very good. I think we can uh, yeah, conclude here and with this statement winning team for Armenia and for Armenians. Yeah, so thank you Shant. It was great thank to talk to you. Thank you for this opportunity. It was a pleasure.